Welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson, and for today's video, I thought we'd do another one of those rant style videos where I talk about whatever's come to mind. And today, I think I want to talk about some of the challenges we face with aquaculture. So we're getting close to the end of 2018, and it's a great time to sit back and reflect on the last year. And unfortunately, there have been major challenges in the reefing hobby over the last year. About a year ago, this time, we lost Fiji. Fiji was a huge importer of wild collected and mariacultured coral to the US and all over the world. And then uh, last summer, we lost Indonesia. Indonesia was probably the world's biggest supplier of wild coral and mariacultured coral, and we lost that over the summer. So we are becoming very limited on our sources of wild collected coral. So aquaculture is our savior, right? So in today's video, we're going to talk about some of those challenges we face in aquaculture. So to begin with, let's start with some definitions. Now these aren't dictionary definitions. These are my own personal definitions. So wild cotton, wild collected fish and coral are what they sound like. Wild caught in wild collection means is right out of the ocean. Next is mariacultured, and that is the stuff that is grown in the ocean on big racks for the aquarium market. So these are little pieces that are taken from the ocean and then they're grown out and hopefully those colonies are then fragged to create the new frags. Next up is aquaculture. These are the coral that are grown on land in big vats and hopefully it's the same deal where we're fragging the frag or fragging the mother colonies and we're having very little impact on the wild coral. So over the last year wild collecting has been shut down due to various reasons we're not going to go into now but basically it's political and ecological. But what's weird is when they shut down the wild collection these countries also shut down the mariacultured business. So that is a big concern because from my understanding of mariaculture, it should be a very ecologically sound way to farm coral. So the dream is aquaculture. We grow all the coral we need in big vats, in big warehouses all over the country. We're not reliant on other governments. We're not reliant on weather. We're not having problems with any of that we take the entire growing process into our own hands and it sounds brilliant but there's some troubles with it first there are some great corals for aquaculture these will be your fast growing corals or those super colorful corals that take very precise conditions to get those colors so acropora are great for aquaculture they grow quickly but they also like very specific precise water quality and lighting to get those crazy colors we like and they also sell for high enough values that we can justify growing them out but the problem is is a lot of the coral we want to grow don't grow very fast which becomes a problem i am personally a big fan of brains and favias but they're slow growers so aquaculturing something that grows slow and has a relatively low sale price becomes a problem. Then there are other corals like scalemia or plate corals or cyanarena, acanthophilia, these big like single polyp corals that aren't really fraggable. You can't cut them because they grow so slow, they have a high mortality rate, and they'll, it'll take forever for them to get their old shape back. So if you were to cut a scully in half, you might be waiting a decade before that coral is sellable or those two corals are sellable. So it's not a very good aquaculture candidate because your return on investment is gonna take so long to get your money back on that coral. So a lot of coral are gonna be more conducive to aquaculture conditions than others. So probably at the top of the list are gonna be your stony species like Monipora, Acropora. These are bright corals that have reasonably good values when they're the right coral. They grow fast enough that you can justify aquaculturing them and they are really great candidates for aquaculture. Next up are gonna be your soft corals. They grow really fast, they're super hardy. They just don't bring the kind of values that a lot of your stony corals do, especially Acropora. 
Now your LPS are where it gets a little more tricky. Some grow fast enough that you can kind of justify it, branching you feel it are kind of on that list, but they grow slow enough that profits are small for Euphelia. It's a lot cheaper at this point to import them from the wild. This is a big part of the reason that gold torches have gone from $80 a head to $300 a head in the last year or two. The fact is, is we're not bringing many in from <clears throat> outside of the aquaculture system, so wild collected, and the ones that are being grown are growing slow enough that our demand is way exceeding supply, so prices have gone way up on those corals. Same with gold hammers and anything really high-end that grows fairly slow. Those prices have been going way up. And of course, anything that grows slower, like a wall hammer, is going to be harder to aquaculture. They don't cut very well. They grow really slow. So those really aren't good candidates for aquaculture. Neither is a bubble coral. That big bubble coral I have, it really can't be cut. The survivability rate would be really low. And it grows so slow. So that's a problem. And of course, as we discussed, there's those corals that take so long to grow that they just don't make economical sense to aquaculture. So the next big problem we face is really the definition of what aquaculture is and the lack of any real regulation within the aquaculture industry. As far as I know, there's really no definition as to what's truly aquacultured. In my opinion, if you wanna sell something as aquacultured, it needs to be predominantly that piece needs to be grown in captivity. What's going on now, and I know this for a fact, is that large pieces of coral are being cut up into frag sized pieces, they're healing up on frags, and they're calling those aquacultured, even though maybe less than 10% of that frag was grown in captivity. In my opinion, to be truly aquacultured, the corals need to be grown in captivity for successive generations. We need a big mother colony that we're fragging off of, or we need to be fragging frags, but we can't be bringing stuff in from the wild, cutting it, healing it, and then stamping an aquaculture label on it. It's not ethical and it shouldn't be happening. We need to be calling those wild collected or healed corals and there is definitely a reason to buy a healed coral. A healed coral is gonna be far superior to a recently cut coral. This is a coral that's healed. It's gotten used to the aquarium environment. These are far superior corals. But to claim they are aquaculture, to me, is a disservice to the community. To support this, there is no way that people are growing brain corals like favias fast enough to really aquaculture them for the prices we're getting them at. When you can buy an aquacultured brain coral online or at a local pet store in the 10 to $30 range, you know that they didn't wait the year for this coral to grow into the frag size piece that it is. This stuff grows relatively slowly and I would be willing to bet that there are very few people out there able to grow enough brain coral fast enough to keep those kind of low prices. And really to sustain the entire US aquarium industry in coral, the way we're used to buying it, we are going to have to grow coral on land at an industrial scale. So we're gonna have to grow tons of coral to meet the current US needs, at least to keep prices low enough to where the average person can afford the coral. So right now I probably sound pretty down on aquaculture. The fact is I'm not. I love aquaculture and I think it's the way of the future. But here's the way I see the industry in the future. I think our high-end stuff grows on land in aquaculture facilities. So this is where we're gonna grow the really awesome acros, the Montes, the cool, fast-growing LPS, all of that stuff that's relatively fast-growing that is going to be light and chemistry-dependent to get those amazing colors. and I think that works brilliantly. But what about all that bread and butter that we like? Our regular euphelia, nice green euphelia, our scullies, our bubble corals. How do we get those? That's where I think as a hobby, we need to reinvest in the mariaculture business. Now, 
part of the problem is that, that has been taken away from us and rumor has it it's because the system was being abused just like I talked about the aquaculture business being abused. So rumor has it mariculture was being abused because people would take a coral off the reef they would put it on a frag plug, put it out in the ocean on their table that they use for grow out, and then a short time later go collect that coral, stamp the mariculture label on it, bada boom, bada bing, it's mariculture, and that is not okay. And my, and my guess is, is that's what killed mariculture. But I think with good regulation, we can fix that. Mariculture is really inexpensive and really low resource use. So basically all you need for mariculture is you need big tables in the ocean which are relatively cheap to produce and you need somebody to take care of it. Great thing is is where we grow a lot of our coral like Indonesia and Fiji and Australia is a little different but a lot of these are relatively poor countries that would really jump at the opportunity to have these jobs growing coral out in the ocean. Next thing is as far as the environment goes these are doing almost zero damage to the environment where aquaculture puts out a lot of co2 and we've got a whole industry behind it the only real problem we have with mariculture is shipping because when it grows in the ocean it's doing its natural life cycle all we're doing is moving the coral onto a table and growing it out and we can grow it for a long time on these tables. The only real pollution that comes from it is our shipping from the Pacific to its destination. And in all honesty, yes, it does take a lot of energy to transport a coral that distance. But I have a feeling in reality that's going to turn out to be the best way for us to get those slower growing or bread and butter corals. So a brain coral can take years to grow into a big colony. It doesn't make sense to do that in an aquaculture facility. A scully takes too long to grow for an aquaculture facility. A bubble coral is the same way. If we want to continue seeing these corals, we need a way to grow them so that we can have them in the future. And I think mariculture is gonna be the ticket. We grow these on tables, we can have vast expanses in the ocean, taking up basically what was kind of deserty seabed because it was in a sandy area. We can maintain these, we can take care of them at very low cost, and we can grow them out at their own pace because we have the space to do it and the resources it takes is very low. So I think that's how we keep these corals. That's how we get our acanthophilia in the future. That's how we get our cyanarenas. That's how we get our bubble corals. That's how we get our favias. We grow them in the ocean with mariculture and the super high-end zoas, the super high-end acros, we grow those on land. And you know what? Personally, I love wild collection. So I hope we can find a sustainable way to work with the countries, with the reef, to make wild collection super sustainable because in reality, wild collection is not the reason the, we the reefs are dying. Wild collection is not the problem. The problem is everything else mankind does, overfishing, global warming, it just all works together to be a death sentence for the reef and we need to fix that. So I hope the world does the right thing as far as wild collection, and I hope we're smart about it and we really renew the mariculture business. And of course, we can completely control aquaculture in a hobby, and we need to be able to do that as well. Speaking of aquaculture, you know that gold hammer that you've been growing for like five years? It sure looks like a devil's hand. Thanks for watching this episode of Mile High Reefers. Like, subscribe. See you on the next one. Peace.